Hello, it's Earl again, Custom Handrails, and welcome to this next video, which is titled uh, Tangent Handrailing the Ordinate Method. And this portion of the video will be addressing the problem that I had with my original um, drawing for this project, where I used the pitch of the handrail instead of the tangent pitch of the upper adjoining piece to get the drawing and uh, that's what we're going to be going into today so um, again <laughs> here we go I know it's a uh, it's a tough subject to cover and and keep an interest up but uh, thankfully uh, if you're here you probably uh, viewed part one so I'm glad you hooked up with a second half and we're going to get going in it and see if we can uh, come up with the answer to my error in the first video. So let's get started. In Rhino, and in case you didn't watch the first part of this, this is the piece that we're dealing with today. And uh, if you didn't notice where this fits in, um, we're going to take a quick look at that so we don't lose you. As long as I don't lose it myself here. All right, this is the piece that we're dealing with today, and we're going to go over one of the problems. We're going to continue uh, laying the face mold on the block and uh, finish making this piece first. Then we're going to cover the problem that I had with this piece and um, the reason why this piece was no good and I had to make it over. Um, it included making this piece and the cap. Unfortunately, I didn't cut the null or I would have had to replace that. So, how important is it? You can see how important it is. There's three pieces involved that could have been um, a real disaster here for me financially, time-wise, and all the rest. So, um, let's take a look at that. We'll click on the, uh, we might as well do the, the whole show here. Again, this is a photograph of the finished product and this is the 3D drawing and you can see how well that, uh, that lines up with our work on the computer in the 3D drawing program. That's pretty neat, I think. Alright, so let's get started again on this thing. We'll continue where we left off um, let's get to a different uh, screen here and we will continue with the cutting out of the let me get settled here cutting out of our block and turning it into a piece of squared out rail ready to shape so this is where we applied our face mold and we cut this out on our uh, outside curve lines and our joint ends to get this result and then we put our bevels which we, uh, we got from our drawing in the previous video on both ends that's that is the angle here is 38.84 degrees from my plumb line here to the bottom of my squared out mold. That's what I want to cut off. And how do I do that? Well, let's see here if I can turn something on. I want to be cutting right through here. So I'm going to pop this right in the miter box and lay my blade over at 38.84 and my uh, angle at this end at zero. And I'm going to cut that thing. I'll make a little mark here at where the top of that line comes around the edge so I can see it and I'm going to cut that thing um, right out of there. All right once we get that cut we can stand the whole thing up and then we're going to be going to the bandsaw. So we're going to stand that thing up we're going to take our face mold and we're going to put it on our shifted tangent. After we've laid the uh, face mold on our block uh, you can see we have a little extra piece glued on here because we did reduce the size of our block 
and now we need a little piece on there in order to trace our line on and to be able to cut this out and see where our line is so you can just use a piece of scrap for that and put it on there and we're going to lay our um, face mold on our shifted uh, tangent line and we're going to draw this out trace this out on both sides and be able to cut this thing out so we're going to be cutting it on um, on those lines that we just drew straight down and we're going to end up being able to cut the sides of our squared out block we're going to do the same thing on this side and after we get that done um, we will be in um, let's see here we're not there we are uh, right here turn on this and let's take a, a real picture of where we're at at this point we've got our sides cut out and I use a falling mold um, I didn't really want to get into that in this particular video but uh, maybe we better uh, why do I use a falling mold I find it's easier to get the uh, the lines on this side of the mold and the lines on this side of the mold in the proper orientation uh, so that when you're cutting the bottom that ends up being proper on the bottom and you don't have a twisted um, uh, bottom and top face I just find that it's easier a lot of people don't like to do that that's your choice all right so um, how did I get the falling lines of falling molds I didn't want to get into that but let's do it okay let's get over back over here to our original drawing some lines on here boom all right what do we got here what we're going to do is take our center line here which incidentally if you remember is divided into two separate radiuses we're going to have to treat them individually if I join them together and divide the whole line up um, things start getting crazy with my inside and outside radius lines so let's just take the um, the upper radius here I'm going to divide that by 4 and get the length of it at 4.01 and then I'm going to take this next the lower radius here and I'm going to divide that by 6 just to keep the spacing somewhat even and that length is 6.47 so what we need to do next is come on out here and we're going to set up those two lines and divide them. This is 4.01 divided by 4, and this is the other line divided by 6. And we're going to run uh, these ordinate lines through these points that have been divided and up to our baseline, and then 90 degrees up to our uh, pitch line and then we're going to run uh, horizontal lines out from there out into here and we already have our line uh, divided up and we run up some verticals from those d divided points and where these meet is where we're going to put our center falling line here right there that's where we're putting that on there so we're going to start at the top and work our way down and hit all the intersections and then we'll offset the line half the width of our height of our rail and we have the center falling line and this center falling line is going to be what's used to get my inside and outside radiuses to be at the same point in height um, so we're going to do the same thing with them we're going to divide up this upper radius by 4 and the lower radius by 6 and get their lengths 
come out here and do the inside radius and the outside radius the same way. Get our lengths divided by the number of, that was on the plan view. Run the verticals and these are uh, hitting the points on the center line at the height that we want them and it keeps um, the inside and outside radius heights at the same point um, and it, it works um, and just to show you how well it works here let's just take a, a line and run it out perpendicular to the outside here now let's take and, and divide this line by six there we go that point is right on that spot perpendicular from the center point you'll find the same thing on this one here if we extend this out we're hitting the same point so what it does is it it, it gives me a falling line that I know is going to be proper on the top and the bottom according to the um, our radiuses so that this line would actually come out and hit the center point of these radiuses so that's what I do um, it seems like a lot of horsing around and maybe you feel that <laughs> you wouldn't want to go through all that but I like to have that paper mold printed out that I can paste on there and I don't have to do a lot of other gymnastics I'd rather do it on the drawing than I would in the field uh, with a, uh, what I used to do sometimes is print these um, plan views out and get my inside radius and um, I would set my block right over top of the paper pattern measure the distance I, I had from the um, from the the base up to my center point line and then extend the line out uh, from our center point to the other side and make sure that my height on this side was the same and I just like uh, the accuracy of of this and the fact that if I'm going to horse around I'd rather horse around on the drawing and uh, take the paper pattern out to the shop that's my thing you can do what you want okay so after we get that those top and bottom lines cut to um, square this this block out this is what we end up and then you got the task of shaping this thing so that's a whole nother topic but uh, when that is shaped and we cut the uh, the miter joints in there and also in the block we can attach that together and we are good to go hey we still haven't answered the question here as to why this pitched inclined tangent here is wrong and that's what this video was supposed to be titled and we haven't touched it yet so let's get into that right now in order to really get this thing ironed out we have to go to the connecting piece of handrail that has to be done and established first before you can even do this if you're connecting to a piece of tangent rail which this one does so let's get into that so we're going to take a I'll cruise down here and take a look at um, this is the the piece of uh, wreath handrail tangent handrail that our fitting is attaching to and what we're trying to establish is the pitch of the tangent not the pitch of the rail which is what I use for the drawing I just overlooked it when I did it and uh, made a big mistake it's easy to do so how do we come up with this pitch here of this section this section of handrail well let's take a look down here and we'll try and take this apart a little bit here's the uh, the drawing here and these are the treads coming down the stair so what we need to do is get the actual pitch of the stair first coming down here so 
We need to get that because of y, you might ask. We need to know what the rise of the section is of this piece of handrail here. Where is the elevation going to be at point A and at point C when we put this rail in pitch? So that's what we're going to take a look at right now. Here's our two treads and here's the little piece of rail between them. We also know that the rise is 7.48. So let's get this thing laid out. We're going to find the length of this arc here and we're going to uh, set it out here next to it and we're going to go vertical this um, rise of the stair here 7.48 so then we're going to connect these and get the pitch of the rail which is 49 and some change so after we know that then we have to uh, lay this out from the length of the arc that is uh, going to represent this this piece of rail here so the length of the arc is 21.82 and that's not the distance between A and C it's the actual length of the arc so we're going to set that off 21.82 and we're going to put this pitch the pitch of the rail in here from A to a vertical going up from our 21 uh, inch mark and we're going to find out that the rise of the section for this piece of hand tangent handrail that adjoins our uh, piece that we're making is 25.80 so we already have the drawing up here made with with the uh, rise of the section plugged in and the part that um, makes this drawing uh, show the difference between the pitch of the rail and the pitch of the tangents will be this. This is a tangent drawing. Everything in the drawing is set up kind of on the tangents. So we have this tangent length in the drawing and we have this tangent length which we're going to swing up to here the way you would normally set this drawing up so we have uh, both tangents in a straight line stretched out now we already know the rise of the section that will not change but the pitch is not going to be the pitch of the hand round why because this length from A to C is longer than the length of this center line arc in the handrail so the new pitch that we're putting in here connecting this rise of the section at point C down to point A is going to give us an angle of 4720 so that's not the angle that I used I used the pitch of the handrail which we got from this this drawing here so let's um, throw some more lines in to go over this a little bit again. We got 11.94 as a length of the incline tangent uh, and 11.94 the same as this incline tangent. Fortunately in this drawing they're, they're both the same pitch. So we're going to lay that out. If we add those two numbers together we get 23.89. So here we are. We stretch that out to 28 point or 23.89. We run a vertical up. We have to keep the rise of the section the same, and we're connecting this to get the pitch of the tangents. So we are at 47.20. Now here we go. This is the pitch that I should have used. I didn't. So all the stuff that we went over on this drawing, that piece that we made was wrong. It got burnt. So we had to start over and plug in a new set um, uh, with the proper pitch from our adjoining piece, the pitch of the tangent. These, these uh, tangents have to be the same. Um, the same and show it up in this drawing. Uh, this pitch here 
is going to continue th from V to A and on through on through our uh, adjoining piece, the one that we're working on. And I didn't do that from the beginning. So I hope that is a help to you. I know it's hard to take it in. It doesn't always make sense in your mind. Uh, but neither does finding the hypotenuse of a triangle, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, I know I've seen the drawings of those little cubes on each side of the triangle and you add uh, two of them together to get the ones that are on the hypotenuse. That is great as far as getting the answer, but do you understand why that works? I'm not sure I do. This is one of those things. You just have to plug in the formula. You have to do it the way that the tangent system was set up. And, and believe me, it all comes out in the wash. So uh, if you don't quite grasp it in your head, the reason, uh, that's fine. That's, it's hard to get a hold of. But just believe that that's how you have to do it, and you'll be in good shape. So I think we just about... Uh, beat this thing to death here and I think we're done so I hope it makes things a little bit clearer on um, what has to be done when you're joining two pieces of tangent rail together uh, that you have to go by the pitch of the tangent and not the pitch of the rail so I hope that's a help to you and I'm going to sign off here I don't think I'm going to click my my fingers and uh, try and wake you up so uh here we go thanks for watching and we'll see you next time